But are you at risk of exposure to an infectious disease like AIDS where you work? Well, I don't, I don't think so. Where I work? I don't know if it has much to do with where I, where I work for me. I just finished a job working in publishing and um, there was no risk, no risk whatsoever. Well, I don't think it would be very easily transmitted in the workplace. I would think there's actually very phys little physical contact between people to really worry about that these days. Well, I don't think there's AIDS where I work at. Despite what you may think, employees are exposed to and in some cases contract infectious diseases at work. While there are many different types of infectious diseases, the ones we will concern ourselves with here are hepatitis B and human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. Although these are very different diseases, they are transmitted much in the same way. How do you think you get an infectious disease like hepatitis B or HIV? Well, you'd think most of us obviously know that by now. Well, that's pretty well known. It's either through having sex, intercourse, sharing needles, through irresponsible sexual behavior, blood transfusions, or using unscreened blood products, I guess. In an effort to prevent the spread of infectious diseases like AIDS, which is caused by the HIV virus, organizations around the country are educating people about the risks of exposure and how to avoid them, including educating children in schools. HIV is found in infected blood, it's found in semen and vaginal cervical secretions of infected people, and it is spread through unsafe sexual contact, infected blood, and through the infected mother to the fetus of the newborn, and we call that in utero. Now that we know how infectious bloodborne diseases like HIV and hepatitis B are transmitted, you may be asking yourself, what does this have to do with my job? I myself was, was stuck with the needle. Of course, the first thing I thought of was um, HIV. We work in a situation at the university where we're in contact with a little bit of everything. And uh, we have a lot of needles, a lot of razor blades, um, a lot of sharp objects. I also know of somebody in the clinic that was um, stuck with a needle and the patient was HIV positive. He had just applied for some health insurance and was turned down because of his needle stick, so that's a problem. I, I myself have never been exposed to blood, but a, but a co-worker that I, that's a doctor in trauma was stuck with the needle. I know of two sharps containers in, in my whole area, and they're so jam-packed full they can't shove one more in. Mm -hmm. You can see them hanging out the top. One common exposure risk is the needle stick injury. What would you do if you found a used hypodermic syringe where you work? I think I'd overpass it. I'd first of all pick it up very carefully, perhaps with a, a, you know, a towel of some sort. I used to manage apartments and every now and then I would find one and I would just you know, be very careful about it and bury it. That's what I did. In order to minimize the risk of exposure to an infectious disease, a standard procedure has been developed for the safe handling and disposal of used hypodermic syringes and other sharp objects. Let's take a moment and learn the steps in this procedure now. First, assess the situation and identify the problem. Next, get the appropriate materials to dispose of the syringe safely. You will need gloves, a plastic bag, a sharps container, and tongs. Now wash your hands and put gloves on. Use the tongs to pick up the syringe and place it in the sharps container. Place the container and your gloves in the plastic bag and tie it up. Dispose of the bag, then wash your hands again. Another way that infectious diseases such as hepatitis B and HIV can be spread in the workplace is through exposure to blood or certain other body fluids. What would you do if you came across a pool of blood where you work? Oh, I'd walk away from it. I definitely wouldn't touch it. I would probably just mop it up. The first thing one of them wanted to do was just go clean it up. Not the supervisor goes, ah, uh -uh, you get gloves on, you get the whole business. Personally, a lot of people say, you know, use gloves. But if I'm using a mop, I don't see where I should use gloves. Or this employee, he never knew he hadn't dealt with blood at all in, in the past or anything, and he 
You know, he was just going to go clean it up. <laughs> but you don't do it that way. <laughs> The same standard procedure that is used to dispose of a syringe can be applied to cleaning up blood. First, evaluate the work area and identify the problem. Then get the proper equipment to clean the area safely. You will need gloves, soap and water, disinfectant, paper towels, and a plastic bag. After you have gathered your materials, wash your hands and put gloves on. Now clean the area with soap and water, then disinfect the area. Once the area has been cleaned and disinfected, place all of the used materials, including your gloves, in a plastic bag and tie it shut. Dispose of the bag, then wash your hands again. For workers, needle stick injuries and direct exposure to blood pose the greatest risk of infection. However, let's consider two more examples where an employee might be at risk of exposure to hepatitis B or HIV. Because vomit and other body fluids may be contaminated with blood, Precautions must be taken when cleaning it up. Remember, first assess the situation and identify the problem. Next, get the appropriate supplies to clean the area safely. You will need gloves, paper towels, disinfectant, absorbent material, and a scoop. Now wash your hands and put gloves on. Then apply absorbent to the vomit. Scoop the vomit into the plastic bag. Disinfect the area. Place all disposables, including your gloves, into the plastic bag and tie it closed. Dispose of the bag, then wash your hands again. And while it may be unlikely that you find a used condom where you work, precautions need to be taken. Assess the situation and identify the problem. Get the appropriate supplies. You will need a pair of gloves. Wash your hands and put gloves on. Pick up the condom and dispose of it in the toilet. Take off your gloves and dispose of them. Wash your hands again. The OSHA standard for bloodborne pathogens has been in effect since 1992. This standard guarantees employees who are covered the legal right to education and training and proper protective equipment to prevent exposure to bloodborne infectious diseases. A hepatitis B vaccine free of charge to prevent hepatitis B infection as well as post-exposure evaluation and a medical follow-up for workers who are exposed to blood. This standard covers all employees who have a risk of exposure to blood in the workplace. If you have questions regarding this standard, contact your local OSHA office. What should employees do if they have been exposed? We have a procedure at the clinic where I work, so um, I filled out an incident report and um, Went, was seen by uh, occupational health, which was an on-the-job injury. If you have been exposed to blood in the workplace, remember, first clean the area, then notify a supervisor. Fill out a standard 801 incident report form and see a doctor. Remember, to avoid exposure to blood, assess the situation and identify the problem. Then get the proper supplies to deal with the situation safely. Wash your hands and put gloves on. Clean and disinfect the area if appropriate. Dispose of the materials safely, then wash your hands again. By following this standard procedure, you can significantly reduce your chances of contracting an infectious disease where you work. Today, through education and training and by using protective equipment, workers are taking action to reduce their risk of exposure to infectious diseases. The most important thing about HIV and AIDS is that it's totally preventable. It's a, a, an infectious disease, and they don't have a cure for it, and I'm not ready to die. Well, I think it's probably the biggest problem facing America today. I, I think there could be more education, yeah. There's nothing that can, that can cure the disease, and I wouldn't want to take any risks. Don't worry about it, but as long as I abide by my rules and regulations and my safety tips, then I don't worry about it to the extreme where I want to quit my job. <laughs> today, and every day, I hope that I always remember to wear gloves. I think people should protect themselves. You can look both ways before you cross the street. Well, it's the same thing with the HIV. For more information on HIV and AIDS, call 1-800-777-2437. For more information on hepatitis B, contact your local health department. For more information on the OSHA standard, contact Oregon OSHA at one 800 922 2689.